Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a template to easily create product mockups. I'm using an LP cover here, but this can be used for t-shirts and books and many other things. What this will allow you to do is simply drop your image into the template and have it automatically appear in your mockup photo. So for example, I'm going to place my image in here. And there we go. It's in the mock-up. Simple as that. So, let's get started. For this we need both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer because the tools we require are split between them. So we'll close this and head to Designer. Now to start with, we want to open our mock-up image. So I'm just using this. And then we need to create some artboards. So we select the artboard tool, click insert artboard, which creates one for this image, and then click it again to create a second one. And this is where we'll put our artwork. So this needs to be the same dimensions as your artwork, which in this case is 12 inches by 12 inches. So first I go to document setup, make sure we're working in inches, 300 dpi. Okay, now we select this artboard, make sure that's unchecked. Now. 12, 12, that's the right size. Now we can place our artwork in here. Now, with our artwork selected, press Ctrl G or Command G to group it. Then go to View, Studio, Symbols. And with the group selected, click Create. We'll name this artwork. Now what a symbol allows you to do is have multiple instances of an object that are all the same. So I could have several of these and any edits I made to one of them would apply to all of them. So undo that. Now what we want to do is put this into our artwork. So we can drag this symbol into artboard one, place that there. And then we can head over to Affinity Photo. So I'll just save this first. Then File, Edit in Photo. So now in Photo, we want to distort this image so it matches the background. So what we're going to do is select our symbol and we're going to group it again. That way any effects we apply will be applied to the group and not every instance of the symbol. So with that selected, we're going to use a live filter. Now we're using live filters because we don't want to rasterize our symbol, we want to be able to edit it again. So we're going to choose a perspective filter and I'm just going to very quickly move this into place. For some images you want to use masks to get it just right, but this one looks okay, at least for this tutorial. And since it's printed on a white background, we're going to set our group's blend mode to multiply, just to give it that extra bit of realism. Now when using live filters with symbols, I've noticed you sometimes get these glitches appearing. They don't seem to appear at certain zoom levels or on the exported image. So don't worry about that too much. And that's essentially it. You can add as many effects as you want onto this. You can add grain, you could add a mask, you could add a depth of field filter if your image is sharper at one point and blurrier at the other. And the great thing about this is anything we change here changes here. So if I want to change the artwork, I just need to drop the image in here and it appears in there. Just make sure it's inside the symbol and it should work fine. And now you've got a template which you can use again and again. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Cheers.